So I, I named this uh, session today physical voice acting. And the reason being is because now more than ever, I firmly believe that our acting skills, our abilities are going to be what continues and will separate us from everything else, including all of the onslaught of AI and everything that's coming forward. No matter what happens in the future, our acting is what sets us apart. So to become better performers should always be our main goal. Now, of course, there's business and everything else that revolves around what we do, but acting is at the heart of it. And as someone who started out in the theater and live um, live theater, I don't know how many people here are, um, had had an acting background, but so much of acting is physical. And the cool thing about being a physical voice actor is that we can hear that physicality it brings to life uh, your performances so let's go ahead and dive into first the importance of using physicality and voiceover all right um so just mention about why it's really important now to be a good actor um and i think a big thing for me is always what makes you unique what is it that in your performance differenti differentiates you from everybody? I'm looking at the participant list, and all of us are part of this community. Uh, however, we're all in some form competitors as well. It's a part of what we do. So even though there might be some roles that are for us, some roles are not for us, all right, we're competing on a daily basis to get work which means that we need to set ourselves apart, okay? We need to be the very best or at least differentiate ourselves on a regular basis. So I wanted to kind of go through this idea of using physical uh, physicality and voice acting to bring about all of this uh, differentiation that I keep saying. A couple of things real quick some physical actions. So again, the general idea of what I'm talking about today is we want to make you a better voice actor by using physical movements while you are actually doing voiceover work. This will help you do a couple of things, which we'll get into. But before we do that, a couple of just upfront diff different physical actions, facial expressions, hand gestures, posture changes, body language. Right off the bat, by incorporating just some of these few things into your voiceovers, you are going to see a massive change in your performances. You are going to hear different expressions come out. You're going to say things differently. What's so incredible, and I call it the hands, uh, hands by your side Technique. When I was um, directing theater, coaching um, live stage actors, a lot of new people would always come to me and say, hey, what do I do with my hands? OK, so they'd be standing on a stage and they're listening to somebody uh, talk and they're watching them and it's their turn and their their hands are just by their sides. Right. They're supposed to say a line. But what am I supposed to do with my hands? And I always would reply, well, if you're thinking about your hands, you're not thinking about the right thing. I think you're right, because if you're thinking about the right thing, which is listening and reacting to what is happening, if you focus your mind on that, your body will take care of itself. So how does that apply to us? Mm -hmm. What applies to us, the same in voiceover, I think a lot of times we think about the wrong things while we're voice acting. Like, it's so important to say the words correctly. It's so important to, you know, stay in a specific time. That is important. But, you know, we're, we're focusing on the wrong thing as opposed to delivering a message through physical expression that will come out. Your voice will take care of itself. Your voice will take care of itself. So let's move into the meat of this, which is pantomime, which I absolutely love. I put some <laughs> pictures together to I give it. kind of uh, you know a, a bright, shiny look. Uh, but basically, uh, what is pantomime? 
pantomime is physical actions um giving expression right through physical actions without using words the reason why i've added that the technique for incorporating physicality is going to be using pantomime is because um pantomime is what we do every single day we show emotion expression if you've got kids or anybody you know right or a spouse or or a significant other you know right away there's looks there's movements there's body posture there's all of these things that we can give a message to someone immediately without saying a word so many of us forget that and then just use the words while we're voice acting and not add in the actual physical movement all right um it was interesting i was working with a voice actor this morning who is doing an audition for a new netflix series and he was doing an audition for one of the characters we were really working on his physicality to bring this little it was a like a, a bird, a little bird to life, right? And it's incredible the difference of just using pantomime while you're acting to bring that to life. Now, I want to talk about a couple of these things that you're seeing here and some actual things. We're going to get into some techniques and archetypes later. So let's talk about some actionable things and what you can do to bring this to life. So first off, I'm a big advocate, and we're we're talking about voices here. We're we're talking about auditioning, getting roles, but also getting more jobs and auditions. How can we bring an incredible performance with subtext with meat to it in a short period of time without having any practice and with little to no direction? Right. That's what we generally get. And we have to do that to be successful in our in, in, in voiceover. Using things like pantomime, all right, and physical action allows us to bring to life these performances that normally wouldn't be. So, for example, this dude with his face. I love this dude with this, this facial expression. So I want you to imagine... All right, that you are supposed to be doing an audition for a voiceover, and you know the voiceover they want you to do is you know we want this this rugged spot, uh, and um, you know just this dude brings to me. I did a series of voiceovers for Alaskan fishermen, and it, it was <laughs> these commercials for um, uh, different uh, being environmentally safe while fishing and things like that and anyways but it but it was it was still this rough kind of rugged tough um uh sound that they were going for and in my mind you know how do i i'm sitting in a <laughs> nice booth i mean how do i bring about a character change like that immediately quickly well i need to bring some sort of inward emotion through external stimulus so let me let me let me explain that so what i'm looking to do is i'm looking to create some sort of external movement physical movement whether it's like i'm doing right now talking with my hands whether it's facial expression uh posture all right uh and and body movement to trigger an emotional response. We have been building these habits our entire lives. No matter what you have done in your life, whether you were a construction worker, a teacher, uh, a, a person who you know worked in an office, no matter what you have done, we have been building these emotional triggers our entire lives. Our job as good performers is to be able to start to bridge the gap between it happening on a whim and it happening when we want it to happen, right? These types of things, as silly as that thing, that guy's face looks, think about in your mind if you, and remember, it's not about how well you copy 
that person's necessarily face, but it's the attempt to physically make yourself do something that will bring about an emotional response. Perfect thing. We don't always have time for this, but a perfect thing is imagine when you guys, I'm trying to get this point across. Imagine when you're going out uh, either on a date or somewhere fancy, you dress up. When you dress up, you put on a costume, basically. What does that do? That makes you feel a certain way. All of a sudden, you act differently. Right? Your, your posture changes. Your speech changes. Your expectations change just from changing your clothing. All right. Again, it's a physical action. Uh, and, and the same thing happens here. So when I see something like that, I immediately begin to look at that. And that's, again, another where we're not talking about external stimuli when it comes to pictures, even though images do help as well. But in our particular case, we're talking about you physically doing it. If I physically try to do that, right, all of a sudden I'm going to, I don't know, it just, it just comes out of me. I begin to talk. I don't know. I begin to talk a little different and something changes and. I don't know in me, it just brings it about. I mean, you know, now that was definitely a, a caricature type of feel that Incredible. just came out yeah. of me just from changing that. But all, but just from me, you know, and I didn't look that cool, that guy's face, but from me changing that face and, you know, I just want to do it because it brings about in me a trigger that has come from some experience in my life. All right. So we have all of that's just one facial expression and I, I'm a goofball. So that's what came out of me. Right. This woman, I love with her hands, you know, and I think about just like, oh, right. Or something like this. I'm just, I'm shocked and I'm amazed. You can tell all the way, all of a sudden my posture changes. I'm, my sentences are changing the inflection and the actual sentence structure changes by me doing this physical movement that she's doing. What does that, you know, what is that sharing? What, like, how did that come about? Again, that is from a lifetime of, you know, interactions and memories and things that come out immediately. I hope you are starting to see the power. We're going to start to talk about oh, yeah. the next slide, how you actually you know, build this into being able to call upon it. But, but you see, I mean, this can be powerful because all of a sudden you have on tab emotion characters and what we do, we have to have it on tab. Um, did you want to, I don't know. Talk about differentiating, are right? You, are, <laughs> you can chime in. Anytime talk about differentiating. Wanna. Yeah. I yeah. love that. Um, one thing to your point about differentiating, right. And your emphasis on that. We see that on the client side so much, right? Clients say, yeah, the auditions were great. A lot of the auditions were great. 80% of the same uh, sound the same, right? Like, oh, sure, they're, they're bookable. But we actually want more variety. We want more difference. And seeing you immediately transform, like, I mean, case in point right there, we could, <laughs> we just want to throw pictures at you, Anthony, and like, do this one, do this one, do this one. <laughs> Well, we have a fun time, right? You know, I mean, that's, yeah, and it's, it's, and, and that's where it allows you also to let go. And then right. answer the question. I don't know if anybody here watching has ever been in that situation where you're like, okay, I got this, but you know, what do I, what do I do with it? Uh, it, it you know, should I, should I try this voiceover? Should I, should I try this style? Do I even have any styles? Oh, am I supposed to have a style? <laughs> Like, you know, I mean, right. where does it all come from? Don't ever forget acting is imitating. Acting is imitation. Now, not impersonation, even though, again, impersonation is a part of what we do, but imitation. We are imitating real life situations, emotions, and we take that and we incorporate it and we create our own set of rules and deliveries from it. Right. But in order to imitate, we have to literally physically imitate. All right. To bring but, out again that inward expression. Absolutely. Um, one thing you you did mention already was also just the speed of all of this. Yes. Right. And when I hear you say that, I don't know what how, how fast folks are imagining like 
what Anthony's referring to, but what I'm imagining is the speed in which you do that is three to five seconds, as in that's the client's first impression of your audition, right? So I don't know if you had a time in mind, but I'm thinking like hyperspeed as far as how how quickly exactly. talent are, are doing let's, this. And let's move into why, what we're going to do with all of this now and just some real actionable things for the people watching that are going to help you be fast because I'm a, I'm a firm believer that if you want to be successful, especially with auditioning and what we do, you need to be able to be pumping out an audition every three to five minutes to really maximize your time. That should be the length of time that you're spending on an audition. Okay. Um, when, when it's a cold audition, like so many that we go through when we're getting those from voices, right? So it's really important then to be able to quickly call upon an archetype, all right, or a pre designed character by you. Now I want to I want to make sure just right off the bat we understand character. When I talk about character, I'm talking about every single voiceover we do is a character. That's what we're trying to do. These are all and, and my and, and this is just my humble opinion and how I I look at it, right? Is so these archetypes are ways for you to create your own set of voiceover styles that you can call upon immediately through physical triggers that then gives you an amazing performance that's full of depth, differentiation within that brief 30 to 40 seconds that we're actually recording an audition or a full voiceover. Now, yes, I mean, there's going to be voiceovers where we're doing audio books and longer, but I'm, I'm, I'm sort of right now more gearing this towards auditioning. But as you go to performance, whether it's short or long form, this holds true even more so. And these are just some simple names and things that I've put up here. And the idea again for these is these are, think of these as like five characters that you have to offer, right? And we're just going to use this example. You pull up an audition or a job and you read the sentence or two or whatever direction you get. Mm -hmm. You read through the script and you're like, oh, this makes me feel like it should be the friendly neighbor archetype. Now, again, I just you know, downplayed the friendly, the neighbor next door neighbor. All right. But it's used right as often as it can be. So the friendly neighbor archetype, which is characterized by a warm inviting tone and a down to earth attitude. This type of voice is often used for commercials, public service announcements, other projects that aim to convey a sense of trust and reliability. This archetype we use a lot. Right. This is really oh, yeah. the threat, the friendly, non-threatening person delivery. Okay. This is kind of the base, if you will. This is what the base of all we've do nowadays, generally, unless we're doing video games or something, really falls into. And then we add on to it. So think about how to get yourself into a state of physical being that will allow you to relax. When I think of friendly, right, we were, we're, look at what we put, warm, inviting, down to earth, just relaxed. I feel like a relaxed. So right off the bat, what am I going to do to be relaxed? I think of my posture, all right? I think of my posture. I'm not going to slump over, but I'm going to relax myself, pull my shoulders down. Instead of me being with my chest up and, and ready to go and I'm being authoritative, right? I'm going to relax. I am going to slunch down a little bit. Okay. And what happens Do you guys, I don't know if you can hear us, but all of a sudden I just want to start to even to talk like this and just to feel like it's just more warm yeah, and, yep. and relaxed because I'm, I'm relaxed, right? My shoulders have come down. My hands are not, you notice when I started teaching again, I popped back up and my hands came up. All right. <laughs> because I'm, I, I'm leading in my mind, you know, I'm leading that with with the serious authority type, I'm leading 
us through this. So of course my chest pops up, my shoulders go back, my hands move forward. I'm leading the way, but if I'm relaxed, I put my hands down, my head kind of comes a little bit forward. I'm going to change some mic position, get a little bit closer, but you know, I'm just relaxed. I start to move my, my voice over almost goes to the back. My voice goes to the back of my throat. All right. And I just start to, Hey, you should get this toilet paper. <laughs> hey, you make that sound easy. Right. You make it's, that sound easy, but we know how hard it, it is friendly. to actually relax. We're friendly toilet paper company. Sorry, what'd you say? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we know how hard it is to actually relax, though. Like you're making it sound easy right now, mm -hmm. but so, so we can all hear you. the change. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. So, why does why this works is because what you are doing is you are physically putting yourself into a position that triggers memory that brings about a vocal response that will actually put you into that 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 delivery you want mm. does it take practice yes of course it takes practice however the cool thing about it is, is that when you start doing it, and I hope, and I don't know if you have people who are watching, maybe they're fiddling around trying different things, you can feel it, all right? Another thing, right? When I took the smooth operator, I think we were doing this last time, I don't know if I, I did it with you last time, but, you know, with a smooth yeah. operator, right? You know, I think, <laughs> don't laugh at me, right? But when I think of smooth operator, I just, all of a sudden, my, my eyebrows go up and I start to... You know, just I put I put a shoulder forward, my 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 head turns, yep. you know, and I'm like, you got to try this BMW. It's nice. Right. I, I just start to I, oh, I get yeah. my, my my nose goes up a little bit. Uh, I'm like, hey, my head moves all of a sudden. Now I'm I'm I want you everybody to know here I'm overdoing this to give you some some seeable, you know, context that you can really look at. But the point is, I changed the physical movement of my entire body yeah and and you can hear the change in it now i want to let you know as well yes i have been doing this for a long time and i've had a lot of practice at it but the wonderful thing about this is is that you all have this ability to because again like i said from the beginning this comes from the experiences you have in your life we've all had them we've all had emotional experiences now, what our job is to do is to be able to take these, find the physical actions that bring them out, practice those physical actions and differentiating them to create your own on-call characters that you can bring about to deliver voiceovers at any time. To me, this is one of the most powerful things that we can do. Right. And if you look at your voiceover delivery as its own product, if you will, right, like, you know, my serious authority, that is like a, a product type I have. You know, what's your product catalog? Like if I came to you and I said, you know, what's your in your product catalog? What are the different voices that you offer? And I don't mean by like character. Board, I don't mean, you know, like I'm a wacky character. I mean, more like what are your different delivery styles that you offer? You know, would you, how would you say that? Would you even know what to say? And how quickly can you call upon them? That's the key to all this for us, because when we do voiceovers, even when we book the job, hopefully we do it and it's over and we're on to the next one. Okay. Uh, this you, may you have to have more than one, right? Right. Exactly. And this makes it. Some yes. people have one archetype. Well, thank you. Some people have one archetype. Now I'm going to, I'm just going to go out on a limb as who someone who coaches a lot of people. One is better than none, but we really need to work on having multiple ones. If we want to be successful in today's market. Okay. There are very few people who just do one thing only. Yes. Right. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying that this method gives you, and, and even if it's a little nuance of a change, that little nuance can be the difference of you booking a Netflix series or not. So it's important to me that we can 
be better storytellers, because that's what we're trying to do here, is to become a better storyteller by using these archetypes. You can, by the way, you can create your own. Please do. It is all about, you know, you creating your own. These were just some that I put together. All right. And there's so many that you can, you don't even have to call them archetypes. I hope you just understand that these are character. These are your characters. You call them characters that you do, that you have instant recall of. Probably takes a while to, in the building phases, if this is new to some of you, but uh, a lot of our successful talent that we've talked to, they, they use exactly a version of this, right? It might not be five, maybe they have three, mm-hmm. but it's, it's a huge time saver, huge shortcut as well. Once you can just slip into um, that mode. Um, I don't know how many of them are doing it with physicality, but I feel like physicality is the most effective tool where you just, you're not, you're not spending tons of time prepping for the audition. You see the script, you know, which archetype that fits into you, you can dive right in. No, exactly. And, and what physicality allows you to do though, yeah. is to add more. Right. Right. Because, you know, there's only so much. And, and what happens is everybody, we tend to stick to one to two or three that we're really comfortable with, but then we get pigeonholed into one thing, mm-hmm. right? Where actuality, we could be, we could be extremely talented at a bunch of things. Right. And, and so this allows you to quickly change uh, to one thing, to another, as you work on it and build it. All right. Through, through your own personal work or working with a coach. All right. right. Um, so, so that's, you know, that is physicality, physical voice acting in a nutshell. All right, bringing about physical actions to trigger uh, internal emotional responses. Okay, that's that's what this is about, and then practicing them so that you can bring them upon you to bring out immediately um, your your uh, your delivery.